I'm joined by Mr. Zhao Weidong, who is the Director of Media and Communications Department from the Beijing Organizing Committee for the 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. Mr. Zhao, tell me more about what kind of preparations we're doing for the last mile, almost. Uh, it's true that we're quite busy. We are now in a race against time. We are just over 30 days away from the opening ceremony of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympic Games. Currently, we are working on things on many fronts. One of them is the Flame Exhibition Tour and Torch Relay. As you know, the Flame Exhibition Tour and the Torch Relay are important ceremonies for the Olympic movement. We are now preparing for the Flame to be exhibited in some of the major provinces known for their snow and ice sports in early January. Mm -hmm. Then from February 2nd to February 4th, the torch relay will be carried to the three competition zones of Beijing, Yanqing and Jiangjiakou. Can we see it in the streets? The torch will be relayed in certain fixed areas due to epidemic control. But of course, the audience can watch the torch relay on TV. There are 1,200 torch bearers in total. Okay, well, that's a big team. So besides that, what else? Judging the opening and closing ceremonies that we are preparing with great urgency and care. These events are of great global interest, and I think you will be in for a nice surprise when the time comes. A nice surprise. What kind of nice surprise would that be? I remember very clearly before the Beijing 2008 Olympic Games, uh, there were a lot of different voices about the game, but once the opening ceremony started, everything comes into line. Uh, so people really wonder about this opening ceremony. I think I'll leave it until the opening ceremony is officially held. Of course, there are some differences between the opening ceremony this time and the opening and closing ceremonies of 2008. After all, it is held amid a global pandemic, so we will cut out some unnecessary parts, but I think it'll be just as good. Looking forward to it. There is also the job of organizing the sports events and providing service support. As you know, the Olympic Games is a sports pageant with more than 2,800 athletes to compete with one another. So the organization of the event is very important to us, especially in the context of the global pandemic. Therefore, how to organize the event well and how to provide quality services to the athletes and all the invitees is one of the key tasks we are working on at the moment. So how are you preparing for the best performances of every athlete participating in the Winter Games? Good question. We have established the principle of putting athletes at the center from the very beginning. Our work is about providing quality services for athletes. As we all know, athletes come here to compete in certain venues, so we put a lot of effort in the construction of the venues. For example, the newly built National Speed Skating Oval is also known as the Ice Belt. We've laid the best ice in the hopes that athletes can skate at the fastest speed. We have even tested the rink in a recent test competition. During the test competition, Dutch athletes achieved their best results in the short track speed skating at the Capital Stadium. Chinese athletes also got their best ever results. This is what we do for the athletes, providing high quality facilities to unleash their full potential. As you know, the pandemic represents a major test for us in holding the games. Together with the IOC and the IPC, we've developed two editions of playbooks, which are to ensure the smooth running of the event while ensuring the safety of all parties. Mm. There are two editions of the playbook. Each edition has its own book. One is for the athletes and their officials, and the other is for the interested parties. So, our epidemic prevention efforts are athlete-centered. Since the Winter Olympic Games are likely to be affected by the weather, especially the snow sports, we have established a well-conceived weather monitoring system in Yanqing and Jiangjiakou 
to provide precise weather forecasts on a minute-by-minute -minute basis and to an accuracy of 100 meters in elevation, so as to ensure that we can schedule the competition in a timely and reasonable manner according to the weather conditions and to give the athletes reasonable expectations. Talking about the predictability, there is enormous unpredictability as a result of COVID-19. One of the things is whether we're going to have audience and what is going to be the relationship uh, in the space between the audience and the athletes. Tell us more about that. On September 30th, along with the IOC and the IPC, we announced key policies on epidemic prevention and control which clearly state that tickets will not be sold to spectators outside China or those subject to epidemic control measures within China. During the test competitions, we also had two trial runs for spectators, and the results are good from what we have seen so far. In addition, we issued two editions of the playbooks on October 25th and December 13th. These two playbooks have set out all the specific measures for the prevention and control of the epidemic. For example, we have set up several key measures, such as the remote prevention and control measures. In terms of remote control and prevention for inbound personnel, they have to carry out health monitoring at least 14 days before their departure for China. They need to report their health results on an app called My2022 every day. They need to conduct two nucleic acid tests within 96 hours before their departure. They can only board the plane when the results are negative. Moreover, we believe that vaccines are an important means of epidemic prevention. So this time we have also clarified policies on vaccination. Except for a few medically exempt athletes who can enter the closed-loop management directly after being assessed by the experts, all other inbound personnel have to be fully vaccinated. Those who are not vaccinated have to stay in quarantine for 21 days. We strongly recommend them to take booster shots. We have also put in place effective measures after they enter China. For example, the only entry point we have established in China is the Beijing Capital International Airport. After arriving at the Capital International Airport, the inbound passengers have to undergo a COVID test. They can only carry on with their business in China when the test result is negative. Another very important feature in our policies is the strict closed-loop management. In the closed-loop management system, a closed-loop has been formed through dedicated transportation tools between various venues of the Winter Olympics. All Olympic-related personnel work and live within the closed-loop to ensure they are separated from the other members of the Chinese society. Uh, a lot of the people compare Beijing Winter Games to Tokyo Summer Games because both games happened after COVID-19 started. However, others argue it's going to be very different one game from the other. What is your view? I think our epidemic prevention and control policies for the Winter Olympics have distinctive features which are aligned with the overall epidemic prevention and control strategy in China. Besides, we have also drawn on the successful experience of major sports events around the world. The effectiveness of our prevention and control measures were tested and proven in the 10 international test competitions we organized from October to December. As the 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games are just around the corner, Chinese are taking up winter sports in droves. Ski resorts, skating rinks, and many other winter sports venues around the nation are gearing up to welcome millions of visitors. Five years ago, though, there were only 460 ski resorts in China. Now, there are nearly 800. To make skiing more accessible to the public, the whole country ramped up the construction of ski facilities. And some 2,000 primary and secondary schools across the nation have included winter sports in their curriculum. 
China is aiming to get 300 million people involved in games on the snow and ice. Many people are very curious about, you know, Olympic Games under the new geopolitical landscape. Um, whether it will be politicized, whether it is fair to politicize Olympic Games, when the torch is being lit up. Uh, what should we have in mind in a way? How should we appreciate a real Olympic Games? In today's world, humanity is facing more and more common challenges and is increasingly becoming a community of a shared future. This requires us to stay united and join hands to meet the challenges all together. As a global sports event, the Olympic Games itself is a stage for athletes and sports fans from all over the world. On this stage, people from different countries can become more united. That's why the IOC has added the word together to the Olympic model this year, which I think is of particular significance. In an article that I recently read, Mr. Bach says that Beijing will be the first city ever in Olympic history to host both the winter and summer editions of the Olympic Games. The Olympic Winter Games of Beijing 2022 will be a moment to bring the world together in a spirit of peace, solidarity and friendship. I very much agree with this statement. However, we've noticed that a few countries have already announced that they would not send officials to the Beijing Winter Olympic Games. But we've seen that a great majority of countries have shown a strong desire to participate in the Games, and many more global citizens have shown a strong interest in the Games. When the Olympic torch is lit up, and when the Winter Olympics in Beijing is a success through the joint efforts of athletes and everyone in the world, the confrontational views that resist the Games and the proponents of politicizing sports will naturally disappear. Mm. Higher, faster, stronger, and now together, right? This is the something new about the Olympic spirit. How can the global audience be able to have access, the best access, to the Winter Olympic Games this time? Uh, I think the Olympic Games and the Olympic Games have a bit of I think there are still some differences between the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics. The sports played at the Winter and Summer Games also differ greatly. In terms of the sports themselves, winter sports are probably more audience-friendly and more challenging. Mm. China participated starting from 1980, Lake Placido, I remember that. However, it was years later before the first gold was won. Of course, Olympic Games is not just about winning the gold medals, but rather participating. But how do you expect, you know, you're a Chinese yourself, even though you are working for the organizing committee. So how do you expect the performance of the Chinese team, Team China? Like you said, China's participation in the Winter Olympics predates its participation in the Summer Olympics. China first participated in the Winter Olympics of Lake Placid of the United States in 1980. Then in 1984, China participated in the Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. As for the question of how do I look forward to the performance of Chinese athletes this time, I think we should leave it until the end of the Beijing Winter Olympics. We all look forward to the best performance of Chinese athletes and athletes from all over the world. China has in a way illustrated the possibility of 300 million, 400 million people onto the ice, onto the snow. Uh, this is going to be a huge boost, of course, for the winter Olympic cause. But, you know, what is the reality looking at the China's uh, overall geographical and the weather situation? How do you expect that to happen, Mr. Zhang? I think China is a big country for sports. 
In the process of preparing for the Winter Olympic Games, China also rallied behind getting more people participating in winter sports. In other words, we hope to lead 300 million people to take up ice and snow sports through the preparation of the Beijing Winter Games. We can now see in China that this goal is gradually becoming a reality. In the past, winter sports were mainly popular in northern China, especially in the northeastern provinces. But now, we also find indoor skating rinks in places as far south as Shenzhen. Personally speaking, I am also a beneficiary. So what kind of sports do you take? When I was a kid, I had no idea about winter sports. During these years of preparation for the Beijing Winter Olympics, I also benefited from the rising popularity of ice and snow sports in China. For example, I learned to ski and occasionally skied on the intermediate slopes. Wow, congratulations! Well, how long did you learn in order to make that happen? Uh, I'm trying to learn, but I'm not, a little bit clumsy. It took me about half a year. Of course, I'm still an amateur and a long way behind those professionals. In the process of preparing for the Winter Olympic Games, I've become part of the 300 million people who have taken up winter sports. What was it like for you when you feel, you know, I could really ski now? The first time I went on the slopes, I fell a few times and was very frustrated. After skiing several times, I gradually got the hang of it and realized the charm of skiing. You know, uh, when we have the games on, and when everybody is looking at the games, you know, what can we learn? Because you said Beijing is already the second time hosting an Olympic Games. I'm sure this time is going to be very different from the first time. I want to have some of your takeaways already one month before the Winter Games. In preparing for the Winter Olympic Games, we've also adhered to the four leading concepts proposed by President Xi Jinping. Green, inclusive, open and clean. The four concepts have been followed throughout the whole process of the preparation. In fact, they are highly consistent with China's national development philosophy both economically and socially. Moreover, in the face of the pandemic, President Xi Jinping also put forward the idea of hosting a simple, safe and splendid Olympic event. It is under these concepts and requirements that we have made meticulous preparations for the Beijing Winter Olympic Games and have received high recognition from the IOC and IFs. I think this has also laid a very good foundation for the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing. Tell me more about, for the last mile, how are you preparing to help, to support, and to provide your service to the media from around the world? Uh, I think we have provided thoughtful information services to the media. Information services are made available to all domestic and foreign media. We are treating everyone equally in terms of information services associated with the Olympic Games. For example, we have provided services to the media in various ways, such as responding to their interview requests as soon as possible, organizing media visits to the venues and group interviews, and holding a weekly press conference to release important information. We also provide information services to the media through our newsletter. All in all, I think the media has a mission to report the games. What we need to do is to facilitate the process by offering them all kinds of convenience. By serving the media well, we can also communicate the wonderful messages from the Beijing Winter Olympic Games to the rest of the world. Thank you so much, Mr. Zhao. All the best to your work and certainly to the Beijing Winter Olympic Games.